up? Star Rock here, host and content creator for AURN, and you are watching the AURN podcast. I got my co-host, Jonathan Elias, and we have a special guest, Roy Wood Jr. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Blackness. Boom, 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 boom. Blackness. <laughs> I feel like I'm disappearing into this background. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just a is, is that the concept? Is that the horror yeah, concept? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're having lots of interesting conversations about horror and black people in horror and horror history and yeah. all that good stuff and how <laughs> darkness and comedy kind of Oh yeah, it's all yeah. I just choose not to cry about stuff. I just like, make you laugh instead. <laughs> but I, I want to use that to kind of segue into um, tribulation, right? Which is a show that yeah. you, a live show that you've been doing. Is yeah. it is it over? Um, is it no? Are you no, we still percolating. So we we're doing one June seventeenth uh, in New York City over at City Winery. And tri tri like what it is first and foremost, tribulation is a show where anonymous audience members tell me and other comedians what they're going through in real life. And we go through this little spreadsheet, little app, whatever. And me and the comedians go through real problems, deep stuff. And we clown these people for their problems, and we talk <laughs> trash, and we give you terrible solutions. Then we have an actual licensed therapist, beautiful black woman named B. Arthur, who is one of the top in her, in her craft. And B comes on stage and unpacks it for real, and gives real solutions. And so we kind of treat it as a way, as a group, to kind of laugh about things, but also at the same side of things, kind of, you know, give people a real solution to some stuff. And so that's a show that we do live, but eventually we're going to grow it into, you know, you can also live stream it, even if you missed it and you oh, don't man. live in New York, you can go, you can pay $5 and watch it. But we're trying to grow that into something national. Maybe have a little room like this, yeah. do something, but... You know, it was something that, you know, I came up with with my uh, co-creator during the pandemic where you could see a lot of people going through stuff and a lot of people having issues. And we were just like, yo, what if we just did a show where everybody just say what's wrong? I mean, society is not set up that to, in a way that is really conducive to being sane. <laughs> to be <honest>. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, it, but society is also very isolating and I, don't, and I don't think we really realize how much and I don't think we're going to know for years what working from home does to someone's mental state because for a lot of people if you're already alone and you work from home mm -hmm. that's one less group of people to interact with now I know a lot of us are introverts but not everybody that's right? true a lot of people need interaction. A lot of people need that little bit of human touch. You know, I, I joke about it on stage, but I'm serious. Self-checkout is bad from a social standpoint because back in the day, you would have a little chit-chat with mm -hmm. the cashier. Yeah. Now, yeah. granted, if you got a good cashier, you might be at the hood, Walgreens. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Talking about that. <laughs> but if you were in a particular mental state, Sometimes a quick five to 10 second conversation with a stranger can be enough mm. to just get you to tomorrow. Absolutely. So, you know, we're definitely living in a state where isolation is the default. And so we just wanted to create a show outside of my regular stand up comedy tour mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where we're able to kind of try and get to the bottom of some things or if nothing else, let you know you're not alone that other people are going through it too and that might help you know i'm not no therapist so i'm not gonna sit there and act i love like, it like, but you're still helping people though that's that's the dope part about we hope it. so yeah we hope so i'm and sure I mean, you get some wild questions and scenarios though yeah right? but i mean but people come with everything from it, it's a it's a range you know we had a woman at a show and she didn't even do this anonymously she came up to the mic and shared yeah. with me and b about being the last living member of her family her siblings are gone her parents are gone Ooh. And having to go, her mom was the last one to go. How do you clean out your childhood home that's full of memories of all the people you lost? How do you get through that? Then the next person who came to the mic said he found the Negro that stole his car. <laughs> but the dude only got one leg. Should he still fight? Him? Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, you said absolutely. absolutely. No. What? No. But, he, but he stole his car. He First off, if a dude with one leg steal your car, that's God. <laughs> right. That's what I'm like. You gotta let that go. Oh. Okay. I could look at 
I'm an Aries. That's what the show is. You are Aries, for real. I'm working on myself. Because I actually, it's so funny that you said that. My friend, who's also an Aries, she sent me a video of this lady who was talking about like getting into it with somebody, basically, and she said she had to teach herself. Sometimes you are the blessing, you know, that mm. God had to put Sometimes you, you in teach front of that a person. No, God right. had to put you in front of that person to get out whatever they had to get Got out. It. And you just okay. take that as a, all right, I'm, I was a blessing. I'll take the L. I'm still growing. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm I love cancer. that concept. Yeah. I love it. But we played a long you game. You stealing my car. Clock people's deaths. Listen, <laughs> listen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that, you got to let some stuff go. I digress. So it, no, it's uh, hard, though, especially, like, like I grew up in the hood, so sometimes it's hard to let stuff go because there's always that balance you of, work like... You hard to get the old shit. Oh. <laughs> Do I teach this person a lesson or, you know what I mean? Like... Because if you don't yeah. teach them, they're going to keep on doing it. But you yeah. got to, you know, yeah. growth. Like spanking. Growth. Uh, I'm, I'm less, <laughs> yeah, I'm less likely to pop off now work. than... <laughs> you know what I mean? I told him to let it ride and to steal his crutches or steal his scooter. <laughs> That's, see, that's what I'm saying. You got oh, to pay the long game. Take his that's crutches. A good, that's a good way loosen the wheels. Take his on the little, yeah. <laughs> you go, you, okay. As loosen long the as screw I, on the fake leg. I okay. can't. As long as I just, I don't just let him ride. You know what I mean? Like he got, he gonna have to. I'm learn just saying, slowly, slowly plot their demise. <laughs> this is terrible yeah. advice. Okay, right, this is not right, advice, right. but well, we're just we're and now you see why I have a licensed therapist on stage. There you go. Yeah. To balance. That's exactly. Smart. That's, That's smart. a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I want to go back, you know, a little bit back. Uh, shout out to FAMU. Oh, you yeah. know, we we have gone. We went to oh, yeah, HBCUs. HBCUs. I, I went to the illustrious Howard University. Okay, okay. 1867, <laughs> the real HU, the first HU. I swear black people be reading anyway. off the whole. Yeah. <laughs> the whole. <laughs> Just say the name of your college. He's, he's no, no, no. me shots because I went to Hampton. She, yeah. Oh, yeah. the other HU. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, oh, you Hampton that University too? Oh, founded Lord. in 1872 <laughs> by the illustrious George Washington <laughs> Carver, who then on that day with one brick built seven buildings. <laughs> and we honor those seven buildings every year during the halftime of the football. <laughs> you know. And I'm like, man. We literally, it's taught to How us. How would people be on that? It's taught to us. At, at registration. <laughs> like <a whole> mantra. <laughs> at registration. Like, I mean, not literally. Yeah, you have whole class. Florida and them, registering yes. the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah. Whole, yeah. Whole, yeah. whole Every school entire got a speech. Yeah. University right. 101 classes about, yep, you got to learn the hymn and all yeah. of that. Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask, you know, I, I love, you know, us that have gone to HBCUs and we're thriving in our, you know, our, our industry and our um, careers, do you feel like, or what were the pros and cons of going to an HBCU? Because, you know, we do have pros and cons, but especially when it pertains to your career and, like, h- how it's prepared you. I don't I don't have any cons only because I don't have any comparisons. Mm-hmm. And from what I can tell from black kids that go to white schools, they had issues, too. I think every college is going to have issues, whether it's dorms and lack of housing or whether it's parking or the financial aid didn't get cut on time. Okay, mm-hmm. well, go to a white school. Maybe they got their affairs and orders in that regard, but then there might be a culture part that you're lacking. And then when you get out into the real world, you're a little bit behind. And I just think there's certain intangibles that you pick up at a black college that you're not going to be able to pick up in a book. You're not going to be able to pick up, you know, from some help book or whatever like that you know for me my father died when I was 16 my senior year of high school so when I got to FAMU what I had in hindsight didn't realize it at the time but in hindsight what I had was a series of black men who in their own way were filling in some of the gaps Mm. partially no one man was a complete be all end all not supposed to be Mm -hmm. but if it came to support and somebody believing in you, if it came to someone encouraging you to pursue a dream and the, even though you have doubts about it and you're surrounded by people who aren't pursuing their own dreams, like those little things, those intangibles, having people willing to pull me aside after a class, for me, that was a benefit. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you get that at a white school. I feel like That's you real. probably wouldn't if you don't have the same degree of black professors Mm -hmm. you know i had a at the time assistant dean um dr hawkins and and you know dr hawkins this brother was no nonsense and he was the one who would see you walking in the hall goofing off and just pull you to the side and he just he go you know i know your gpa right (laughs) (laughs) that's a gut punch (laughs) 
Excuse me? And he, and he would just say, go do something. Yeah. <laughs> go and do something. Book or something. Yeah, go <laughs> Stop being out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop being out here. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> yeah. So it was little things like that that for me were a big help. Yeah. They were a very big help. I got to be cliche because Father's Day is coming up. And I know that fatherhood is definitely a part of who you are. And you lost your dad young. But um, were there some lessons that you – like what I'm learning about myself as a parent is that um, there are some things that I've learned that – at the time, in the moment, it didn't seem like they were clicking. And then you become an adult, you become a parent, and it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. So, like, do you, <laughs> are there some things from your dad that you picked up, some lessons in fatherhood yeah. that may have been unintentionally funny or, like, it clicked in the moment in your own journey as a parent? So, it's two things my dad and I used to do together that stand out. When I got my learner's permit, I was his driver when I was 15, like the last year of my dad's life. My dad worked up until like two weeks before he died. Wow. So just a grinder, just yeah. cancer, no chemo. I want to work. Wow. Chemo go make me weak. I'd rather go to the radio station. Wow. Give me two aspirins, which is why I like can never complain. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like wow. In hindsight, I'm like, maybe you should have laid down. Yeah. Baby boomers be playing, though. Can we? I mean, that's a whole other conversation about, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's real. So there was a work ethic thing that was just, I don't know, like just osmosis. That's not a word. Into me. Osmotize, osmosatize, the osmosatization <laughs> of being in his presence. You know, and I can take you back first grade, second grade, when he used to take me with him to the radio station at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. Dope. My pops woke up. My pops was one of them old school black people, wake up without an alarm clock. Wow. Oh, snap. Wow. Every day just 4 <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. would be at the radio station yeah, in yeah, front yeah. of the mic wow. at 5.05. Wow. Jeez. We hit the door at 5. Oh He'd rip something off the wire printer. You know, back in the day, the news, there was one printer in the radio station yeah. in the 80s, and that printer was connected to the basic-ass internet at the time. He'd look through that, find a couple stories that were relevant to black folks, and hit those. Uh, my father always said to me, and I didn't get it at the time, you'd be worth more from your neck up than you'll ever be from your neck down. And it was about valuing intelligence and education. I just, you just don't get it. But then now that I'm older, it's like, oh, I get it. So that's what I try and stress to my son. But he don't get it. But also don't expect him to. But I just keep saying it because in my head, I just know I'm planting the seed for when you're 27. And then you go, oh, that's what that <laughs> meant. But... You know, going with my father to speaking engagements, you know, really put into focus everything that he stood for, what he valued, and his ideology about blackness. So from first grade to when I used to drive him to the gigs, you know, driving to the gigs was the one thing. The other thing we used to do together was grocery shop. And so my pops would go, we were going to Western supermarkets or Piggly Wiggly, and he would, I'd be damned if my pops didn't have a stack of coupons. Oh, <laughs> so do you do that now? And I try not to, but Coupon it's like, is a lot man, of work. I can't help yeah. it, bro. Yeah, I, I can't do it either. I mean. I mean, the problem with coupons, though, is that coupons came in the paper, and newspapers mm. died, and I don't yeah. read papers yeah. tangibly yeah. anymore. So they got coupons on apps. You gotta, now. but you yeah. gotta remember that the app exists and it's a whole yeah. other thing. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta like they used, you gotta be on Groupon. Yeah, and yeah find yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. <laughs> so but the discounts are out there. They but, out there. But my pops about being good with your money and being mm. efficient. What's the better buy? We would stand there for ten minutes freezing in the dairy department doing math. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's half a pound of cheese which is two dollars off or you can get a pound of cheese for a dollar fifty off let's see which is the better buy oh, and the retail pounds. price of wow. this cheese is lower than the retail price of the half like wow straight Just off the dome, equations like, yeah that's deep yeah that's but deep. that's how he would buy milk like that he, you know you get two dollars off but a half gallon of this milk times two costs more than a gallon of this milk. Mm. So 
So a dollar off this gallon is better than two dollars off the half okay. gallon mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's you're essentially point. getting more thinking. milk okay, for your money. Like, but uh, but yeah, that's how but yeah, he. Yeah, no. that's, wow. that's the matrix code yeah, yeah, he yeah. saw. Yeah. So now I'm like that with purchases. Okay. You know, like when you start buying stuff and looking at sneakers. Okay, this sneaker is nice, but I like that sneaker and this sneaker. And then you start ordering T-shirts and merchandise. And yeah. This costs four dollars. This yeah. costs two dollars. Yeah. This plus, like, are you into sneakers man. by any chance? Are you a sneakerhead? I like sneakers that look nice. Don't come up to me in public asking me the name of these sneakers. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's it's, like my fuck is a sneaker. I'm sorry for cussing. <laughs> it's a sneaker. It, you know them kids, they yeah. come up to you. Yeah. Oh, you got the OG veteran one, Scooby right, Doo. Hi, do I? Yeah. I'm gonna hide my face. I didn't know. That. Are they real? <laughs> Look, that's all I want to know. And they green. I got some green <laughs> shoes. <laughs> them the Incredible Hulk. So, okay. <laughs> you can drag me right now. <laughs> yeah. Glad you like them, youngin. <laughs> right. I am the same way. I get respect from the youngins on my right shoes. Right now, I got okay. on the, the but, Beefy's Beauty Supply. Okay, but they be stop. trying to bond. Yeah, and I be missing yeah, moments, yeah. but that's how I miss moments with reaching the youth because I don't know the culture enough. So, um, Which know, I think is the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to freak him out and be like, yeah, you damn right, these are scooby doos. These are dead stuff. <laughs> But then he'd be like, that's weird. He's trying to be young. Yeah, you're right. There's, there's, you know, I don't know. Respect my grades. Right I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, you know, um, I love the stories of your your dad, you know, speaking of parents, your mom, Miss Joyce, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to her. First of all, I was reading about her fighting for equality in education. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is Mississippi. Super, yeah, super dope, super dope. Um, I love history, by the way. But um, before we get into, of course, White House Correspondents' Dinner performance, uh, I want to know, how was it feeling to be able to bring her there and, you know, have her see you perform? And how were your nerves before all of that? I'm not nervous performing in front of my mother. My mom, let's just start. First of all, my mama just like dressing up. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Coming in Classic black mom. Banquets. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. black black mamas love yeah. circle tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really that's that's real. true. <laughs> when you boil down the correspondence dinner, it's just another circle table. Mm-hmm. You know? Circle table and chicken. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it literally that's literally it was fish and steak. I take that back. It was fish and steak. <laughs> Oh, damn, man. Uh, you know, they do it big at the White House. No, no chicken. What was it seasoned? Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fish was a little bland, but the steak was hidden. Okay. The steak was hidden. All right. Yeah. So, you know, nervous to a degree. I think nerve and fear is important in performance. It keeps you honest. It keeps you aware of the stakes of the situation, but... Ultimately, you just got to go do the job. Either you're prepared or you're not. And so once it got to the day, it was a little more. I was nervous around other people. But like, so like, you got to remember the day starts with. Like you wake up and damn, what did I do that morning? It's all of I went. <laughs> I, no, I, you know, my son was there. My mom was there. I slept in. I remember that because I was out till one in the morning running the jokes at the mm-hmm. comedy club the night before. And I had all these events that I was going to Friday night. And so I started with going over my notes with my writers. And then as the day started, got dressed, got out into the hotel. And it was just droves of people. It was just droves of people. And Everybody's got something to say to you, and you know, you're talking and you're meeting like amazing people. So it's like, on the one hand, should I be preparing and working on the speech more? Mm-hmm. But goddamn, that's Gail King and Brittany Griner over there. The hell is Zoe Deschanel? Is that John Legend? Man, like you're just what? just random people <laughs> that you kind of want to go over and say hello to. Yeah. So, you know, you're at this party and it's, you know, it's it's thousands of people. And then they move you into a smaller room where we're in like this VIP reception where we meet 
the vice president. So it's me, my mom, my folks. At this point, it's maybe 300 people. Then you go from another room to another room. Now it's just you and the people that are going to be up on the dais. Mm-hmm. So now it's about 10 people. Wow. And then you go, you get in line, and it's just you and the people on your side of the podium. So now it's five people. So your day has gone from 2,000 people to five. Jeez. And then you're out there alone. Plus Secret Service, right? Yeah, yeah, Secret Service. Well, they're everywhere. They're hanging around the whole (laughs) So. And then you being alone. Now you're alone. Jeez. And so that's when I wasn't nervous anymore. Because I'm like, oh, this is just like every other show. Mm Mm-hmm. You prep, and then you're just up there by yourself. Yeah. So for all the fanfare and camaraderie and all of the people I met in every party I went to and just all of this rah, rah, rah and hoopla, when it's time to do the job, you're alone. It's just you, and either you're ready or you're not. Mm. So you should have taken more time. So at that point, nervousness leaves. Yeah. I do not care about my mother. Like, e- even the shout-out to her came a little later mm-hmm. in the creation process that afternoon with my writers. But I, my job is to perform, yeah. and I cannot care who's in the audience. I cannot care about the consequences of failure. Mm-hmm. Failure is real. Failure is an option, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to obsess over it. Mm-hmm. And at the end, of the end of the day, this is the stuff I wanted to talk about. So either y'all love it or you don't. Ain't nobody's career ended because of this. There's people that some people like. There's people that some people love more than others when it comes to this event. But this is not a career ender. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't something where, man, I'll never recover. Nobody will hire me ever again. (laughs) They'll just go, that wasn't good. And I'll go, okay, it's a weird room. It's a weird (laughs) event, which it is. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. like when you think about that, you are doing comedy that is yeah. essentially cooked fresh that week. Yeah. Most comedy specials you see on television are prepared and polished over the course of six months to a year. You also get to say to these politicians what a lot of everyday people are thinking too. And that's and that's a responsibility. Yeah. So I have to do that. I can't ignore that. I have to honor the position of the voter the constituent because that's essentially what the comedian is up there to represent is the view of the constituent. I'm the only person in this room that wasn't elected, you know, you know I, I guess Caitlyn Jenner wasn't elected. She was you know, <laughs> Kellyanne Conway, but, but you, you get what I'm saying yeah, yeah, in yeah, terms sure. of <laughs> representing a regular everyday person. That is what the job of a comedian is supposed to be in that space, in my opinion. Yeah. So, you know, sink or swim at this point. But at that point, nervousness clouds you. So then I just got angry. I got angry. Like, anger is, like, for me, an important emotion when it comes to execution. Hmm. Fear for preparation, mm-hmm. anger for execution. Ooh. Because now it's like, well, yeah, y'all need There's to hear darkness, this. That, that y'all need to know darkness. what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, y'all can kiss my ass. You know Ooh. what, man? Yeah. Hey, Joe Biden. Yeah. Here's your classified documents you left up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was, and yeah. that Carl Winslow. That's <laughs> a, like, but those are first jokes. Yeah. <laughs> those are like the first, and you, you can't practice that in right. a comedy club. Yeah. Right. So... This is a joke only for this moment. The Don Lemon, Tucker Carlson stuff, it literally just happened five days earlier. Yeah. So it wasn't much I could say. I can't not mention it. Yeah. I love that. So you've run this stuff in comedy clubs. I know this. I know what parts of this is funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got on stage every night for three hours. Did three hours worth of sets. Every night for the last two weeks, prepping all of this shit. Mm-hmm. 
So I know it's funny. I know where it's funny because I've talked to regular people. This is not a room of re- y'all are not yeah. normal. Yeah. <laughs> y'all aren't regular people. Yeah. So I don't care what you think. I don't care I if you're not going to laugh. I love that. So that's the emotion mm-hmm. heading up to the podium. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, the whole time I'm thinking this, Jill Biden is talking to me, and I got to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> On Jill, the president's wife, she, the first lady is always kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hello, and you're from Alabama, and what's Alabama? <laughs> and do you like Alabama? <laughs> do you root for Nick Saban? <laughs> And in my head, I'm like, I can stand these people. <laughs> I want to roast the fuck out of them. <laughs> and it's nothing personal yeah, to you. You're just making chit chat. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I have to go up on this podium and stand before America. Yeah. Ooh. I have to be in the right. So there's a duality happening. Yeah. You know, even in that moment. But the moment you, they, the moment they say your name. And you walk up to the microphone, it's like every other gig, you're alone, and it's just you and your thoughts. And just be honest and, you know, be honest in your delivery. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens on the other side of that, you know you did what you prepared for. You did what you prepared to do. How it was received is beyond me. But I'm not going to walk away from this thinking that I wasn't funny. Afterwards, it's like a huge exhale. Yeah. That's when you can kind of just sit. Because not everyone's on you, like. Oh, oh no, so before that. Also, like, before, before that. Just, like, the release. Oh, got it, right. Like, okay. I sat down. There's a picture on my Instagram of me sitting at the table by myself as the room is dispersing. And, like, that's the picture I'm going to get framed. Mm-hmm. Like, of all the moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just that moment afterwards. Like, it's like, it's the, it's the end of the first Avengers movie where they're eating shawarma. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> They've just saved the world from whatever threat yeah. that movie. Yeah. And they're literally just exhausted yeah. and they're just eating food and nobody's talking. Yeah. And it was perfect. It was it was a perfect mo- like that photograph literally captures it to the site. Cuz even after the performance to a degree you're alone. Mm-hmm. Which is what I love about this job, but you have to remember to like reconnect with people because <laughs> you'll plug into just being alone yeah. because in your head is where that's where you harvest the thoughts the and it's, are, yeah, yeah. Wow. but as soon as i come off the stage i sit down tamara keith head of the correspondence association she goes up ladies and gentlemen that concludes it thank you thank you good night and then president vice president leave i shake a couple hands and then i was just up it's there alone babies yeah, I just went, everybody left the stage. I just sat there and took it all in. And it was like Jeez. the first time that I was like truly present. Wow. The entire time I was in DC was after I did my job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good feeling though. Like right after, you know, you yeah. build it. Cathartic. Just, yeah. Yeah. I figured some people would like have problems with certain jokes and they did and that's fine. But the stuff I needed to get laughs got laughs. I made a point. So it's not a loss. And like, what's weird is that that's how I think that's how most comedians. I think that's how we like <laughs> measure success. It's yeah. dangerous to be a comedian now, though. Didn't <laughs> lose. <laughs> Didn't lose. Right. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. mad. Okay, what are they mad about? Oh, one joke. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what? When? Are, what? What are your thoughts on that? Like, you know, I feel like with social media and everybody having uh, a chance to to speak out on certain issues and it go shit goes viral. Um, with with jokes and like comedians, you know, how is it, how, how do you feel about how people are taking you know things a little too too serious? Do you feel like now it's it's different from back then? You could be a little bit more raw back then. I, uh, I don't. I just think the difference is that people, regular people, have an outlet to go. Hey, mm-hmm. didn't like that. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just more opinions are mm-hmm. out there. I think those same opinions were out there in the past. I mean, George Carlin, there would be hecklers at his shows from time to time who didn't agree with something he said. You know, I think that we're definitely in an era where people don't want to hear certain things and they have a right to. But I really feel like we're also in a world where the people who want to hear what you're talking about, they know how to find you. Mm-hmm. I just I just think we're in an era where people have opinions and they're allowed to have opinions. 
but I don't think any of it has stopped any comedian from making money on the road. A particular company may not want to book you for something because of something you said that made a bunch of their customers mad, but that's a company. They got a right to do that. That's a private sector. And I think people want freedom of expression without freedom of opinion of your expressions, freedom of consequence. You don't get freedom from consequence. Mm. There might be consequences. You say something, somebody might not want to break bread with you. Right. That's the game. Yeah, so that's what I'll always be in my head. I'll be nervous about that because I'm type of the guy who wants to make everybody happy. I Can't mean, be- I'll be wanting to track IP addresses so I could show up at their house and fight. Oh, so you see, <laughs> she is good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm scared. Look, no, but like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about anyone who doesn't like me or doesn't like a joke. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's in passing. Does it does it take work? Does it take practice to kind of get that thick skin, or have you always kind of been that been that way anyway? No, nah, that takes work. Mm. You know, I got lucky because when we did last comic standing in 2010, the network made us live tweet. Oh wow! It was oh, a contractual obligation. Oh wow! So, and this is the early days of live tweeting as yeah. a as a TV performer. Yeah, Twitter was really the wild wild west. Yeah, so folks were saying whatever they. Mm-hmm. So. And it's all under the hashtag. So I have to follow the hashtag mm-hmm. to engage with people who like me. Yeah. But uh-huh. within that hashtag is the people who hate you. And it's like levels to it, right? Because it's people that so, just don't like your comedy and then people that don't like you because mm-hmm. you're a black man, like whatever. <laughs> so I can imagine. Every Monday night for seven weeks because I kept advancing. So every week I was on the show and kept advancing. I'd have to read another round of tweets Sheesh. about me. Damn. But by the third week, you see the repetition. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, that's all y'all got. Yeah. It's not even personal. It's just an outlet for some people. For some people, hatred, digital hatred, it's a real outlet. I got that after the correspondence dinner. Mm-hmm. I got a gang of emails. Be funny half the time, like the stuff they say to you. Like it's just like, okay, whatever. Yeah, and it's and it for the most part, it's short, it's quick, it's to the point. It's like, okay, that's just how you get your rocks off. Yeah. So, no, it does. It doesn't bother me because you know, hate is still an emotion, and I think if you're doing something as a performer that invokes emotion, I think that's a net positive. And it's still engagement. So, like, if you were to post a video or something. There you go. You could hate, but you still okay. came here and commented. You're still clicking. Um, yeah, apathy. <laughs> apathy, I really think, is that's the real, that's the real indifference. That's the devil. Mm-hmm. Somebody being mad at me and having an opinion, cool. <laughs> cool. Fox News took one of my clips from the Correspondence Dinner and posted it on their website mm. to use it to attack the left. And then people from the left were taking clips to, to oh show that I attack the right. Wow. And I was like, perfect. Cool. 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 <laughs> do what you want to do. But no, somebody calling me whatever racial slur of the week or I don't know. That was a good one. God, that was a that was a really good one. It was like bubble lip baboon. Like it was like <laughs> It was like three B's. I can't remember the third B. <laughs> Big bubble lip, bully baboo. Like it was Yo. like tongue twister, yeah, yeah. but yeah. never said the N word. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> like they actually tried to put some thought yeah, into it. It was like, oh, you're trying to make new slurs. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of laugh at that. I haven't replied to a lot of it yet. Mm. Are you going to? It depends. Mm. The How longer the email, the more likely I am to reply. Ooh. Um, mm-hmm. but if you just go, hey, N word, and yeah. dark it, and shut up. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's not. It ain't tricking. That ain't working. I'm going to kind of lighten the tone a little bit. Um, we have to talk about this, right? Like, so we're celebrating 50 years of AURN, but we're also celebrating 50 years of hip hop. A lot going on. I know you're into hip hop. I yeah. saw a tweet that you did. I don't know when this tweet happened, but um, <laughs> you said that Petey Pablo. Had like the top three where you from anthems. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there was more that Raise followed up. that, but yeah. tell me what are your top three where you from anthems? See now, now you're making me think. <laughs> <laughs> and when I and let me be specific when I say where you're from anthem, I'm talking about a song that is specifically an ode to a place. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. that's dope. So 
Like, because somebody was like, oh, Nelly Country Grammar, Juvenile Ha. And I'm like, no. Because it's not an old tune. Those are lead place. singles. Yeah. Those are their first singles. And they're shots out to the aesthetic of New Orleans and St. Louis yeah, yeah, with yeah. those records. And you're learning about their culture through yeah. that song. But the song is not about that city. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I need a song specifically about a place. Petey Pablo, Raise Up, is about North Carolina. He mm-hmm. named every jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was from LA and I didn't know nothing about. But I, you, oh really? Yeah, you know Yo. we was doing this to our shirt. <laughs> my, my that song had me song. like that's mm-hmm. Petey Pablo. That was one of them songs that make you wish you was from another. That's real. Just Almost, for, for yeah. like a week, you yeah, was like, yeah, man, yeah. I wish I was from Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, California love for sure. Come on, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. California knows how to party. California, mm-hmm. city, of LA, like it's just. And that came out during the time, like at the height of the East Coast, West Coast, yep. and it was like yeah. I know for me growing up in New York, like I, I, I rock with that song, but I kind of felt like, oh shit, Can like I? wait, <laughs> should I <I'm laughs> supposed to, should I not like yeah. it? I'm supposed to like this? I'm from New York, no, like. Supposed yeah. to like <laughs> as a, as a Southerner. I have to choose Welcome to Atlanta. I, knew, I was about ah. to say the same thing. Welcome to Atlanta, okay, where the okay. play is played. Because Listen. that song as a Where You From anthem, mm-hmm. Jermaine Dupree like, literally gives you a whole itinerary in here. at Strokers yep. on he Wednesday, yep. and then on Thursday, <laughs> yep. then Friday, yep. and then on Sunday, yeah. you like writing it all right. Okay, this is my yeah, agenda when we right. go to Atlanta. Right. Yep. Like, that's what I mean when a song is literally about mm-hmm. the city. Yep. Uh, honorable mention, born and raised, DJ Khaled, Trick Daddy, Pitbull. Mm. That one is, it's not one of the best Miami songs from a Miami rapper, yeah. but in terms of like, born and raised in a yeah, county yeah, of day, it's like, okay, yeah, it's yeah. this old. is where I'm from. It's yeah. an ode to the yeah, city. Yeah. yeah. I, I tried to think of New York ones. Deja Vu. See, I'm not up. I, I mean, I'm up on Lord Tariq and Peter Guns now, but like growing up, that was that not was something okay. that was played down south. Right, not yeah. in LA either. Actually, I don't think there's because I was thinking about that as you were talking. And, and like, and then part of me is like, okay, Fat Joe, Ja Rule, New York, but that was. I was having an argument with my friend. Is that an ode to New York, or is that a, or is that a diss record? Right, it feels mm. more like a threat than anything. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's it wasn't about yeah, come to it. New York and enjoy the double decker bus and right, the train. Right. Cam and Jay had welcome. <laughs> come to New York. To New York. Mm. I'm from New York. No, you're I right. will murder you. Yeah. You're right. That's, That's pretty real. Much I got a hundred <laughs> guns. A hundred. Oh the hook. <laughs> the hook of the song is literally yes. I got a hundred guns. A hundred clips. A hundred clips. Um, oh. I'm from New York. Yes. <laughs> like, wow, that's something mama, to think about. Not listening to that, saying, "Oh, we gotta take the family to New York." Right, that's very true. Oh my gosh, Whereas California is all love from Diego yes, to the you're Bay. Right. Your oh city gosh. is the bomb if your city that makes make me it pay. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm sitting, I'm like, I got a hundred guns, a hundred <laughs> clips. <laughs> That should tell you a little that. something about I'm the from people New from New York. York. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I couldn't, when you think of like Ode to the City Anthem, I just, I couldn't think of one that hit me the way Raise Up or Cali Love mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. or Welcome to, like, like Welcome to Atlanta was just such a, that, that was just that such was an like, era. Right. Then the remix. Oh, we yeah. played that in Birmingham. No. <laughs> I mean, we ain't even in Georgia. Right. We was like, man, play that again. Man, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, okay, that that's cool. amazing. Yeah, but 50 years of hip hop, man, it, it's, it's amazing. Here's a question for y'all. As we look, because when I look at hip hop now, the thing that makes me sad is that I feel like the young generation, as it is currently standing now, mm-hmm. they are dealing with far more trauma mm-hmm. from from drug overdoses and from the death of their artists, which to me bleeds into informing your hopefulness about your own situation, right? Mm -hmm. If your favorite artist can't make it out, or your favorite artist, because Mm -hmm. like, think about our our rappers died two, three albums in. Yeah. Where there was an optimism, and 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 I'm not even trying to be funny, but you get what I'm saying. I get it, 
they left you with something yeah. to still have yeah, hope. Sure. Whereas now, a lot of the the newer artists that die, they die before they, they're dying on the off ramp to yeah. success. They're not even on the free. They're dying on the on ramp mm-hmm. yeah. to, to success. They're not even on the freeway and get to enjoy anything. Like it really yeah. pains me. It really pains me to see them deal with so much death and loss within within the hip hop community now. Because I wonder what hip hop is going to look like for those kids when they're forty, yeah, I agree, and when they're fifty. Wow. You know, as much as I laugh about it, it's concerning. It's, it it's it, it, like wow. it, like as much as I laugh about reality shows now, mm-hmm. it's kind of cool to see your rapper fifty five mm-hmm. fighting and arguing on the, that. Like, <laughs> like I don't want to skate like going yelling at each just, other. Like, our rappers are but I'm glad you're like, alive. Right. Yeah. Like, who's coming? like you want to live. Buster Rhymes on stage yeah. with Janet. With Janet. Yeah. Performing live yeah. for the first yeah. time. That that was. Yeah. I didn't even know they had never done that song live before. I didn't never, and I'm a huge yeah. Janet fan. And if you've never seen Buster Rhymes live, I mean, oh, you, you got to make that And that's happen. a gift. It's yeah. a gift to see something that meant so much to you in your 20s still around giving you joy mm-hmm. now. Like the essence Essence Fest reunion shows right. and yeah. was but it you the Grammys to make it to that? Yes. I, I got it. The Grammys last year when they did the hip hop yes. tribute and yeah. they had everybody. As much wow. as I celebrate fifty years, part of me sits and hurt for yeah, the I youth know. because I, I don't know what the construct yeah. of their wow. music flashbacks are going to be. I get it. it you know That's what I mean? Real. And so that part of it kind of makes me sad because. Hip hop was supposed to be the thing that was to help you escape mm-hmm. reality, and in a lot of degrees now, for a lot of kids, hip hop only confirms the reality and the horrors wow. that they're dealing with. Yeah. And so, how do you find hope if you can't even find an artist to have hope, put hope behind? You know, yeah. athletes help, but music for everybody—that's the thing that that's supposed to uplift you. So, you know, that that part of it, you know, that makes me sad. I know you tried to do this to keep us from I being know. down again. And, look, and I, I brought you right back to the <laughs> That's real. It's we real was talking all the racism and correspondence, yeah. and you said, okay, lighter yeah. note. <laughs> Petey Pablo, I'm sad that the youngins ain't got no heroes. <laughs> That's my bad. No, it's That's okay. That's my bad. I'm just you brought sad. It back. You brought I'm it just back. sad. You brought it back. I'm sorry. I'm just sad. It's something to think about, though, because if we're going to talk about this this legacy, we have to talk about everything. That's real. So, um, yeah. Okay. I mean, is there anything else you are working on that you want to share with us that you, people need to check out? No, I'm I'm laying low right now. Tribulations is the main thing. My live tour is happy to be here. Uh, we're doing 20 cities, adding 10 more pretty soon. Uh, RoyWoodJr.com is the website for tickets uh pretty much everywhere from sacramento to miami to minneapolis we zigzagging all over the country man all four time zones is it four time zone yeah it's four time zones in america pacific mountain central East. Yes. okay yeah. all right yeah, yeah, it took me a i went to public school <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also the show is tribulations tribulationshow.com if you want to um watch some of the content on demand if you want to come to a live show uh, it's a really dope. It's a really dope situation. Nice, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you all. This was fun. Yes. I'm yeah, glad my voice it. made it. My you voice did. made it all you the way did. through. Look, look, you did it. You, you did it. Made it through. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for tuning into the season finale of the AURN podcast. Woo. Hey.